All right, guys, I have an unboxing video today. Okay, so because of you guys and all the subscribers that I'm getting lately, I have a sponsored video today. So Glary got a hold of me. They emailed me. And they said, uh, if you want to do a YouTube video on one of our guitars, let us know. And I said, you know what? Let's do it. That might be fun to take a look at one of these things. All right, so Glary, I know you guys have seen a lot of videos about these. But um, as the company gets older and better, this is what we're currently looking at these days now. So right off the top, to me, it kind of kind of looks like an Ibanez. You know, one of those, um, what is that Ibanez model? A G170 or something like that? I, I have to say right off the bat, I think Glary has really upped their game. This is a neck through construction. Got a nice blue color. I can see a little bit of some of the wood grain through here where it looks like it's maybe uh, one, two, three pieces of wood. Um, let's set it over here on my workbench so we can get a good look at it. All right, so yeah, I know all of us have seen lots of glary stuff on YouTube. Um, it's some of the most inexpensive stuff you can buy. But um, it's been a few years, like I said, and I think they're starting to up their game a little bit here. Um, I don't see a serial number. Usually on the back of the headstock, you'd see some sort of a number. That would be sort of impressive if they did something like that. Uh, you got the small tortoise shell pick guard. And the shape, uh, you know, there's another guitar. Let me grab this other guitar. All right, so here's the shape I'm kind of thinking that they're sort of going after here. Uh, this is an Ibanez, and this is a Geo, but this is the GAX70. Now, I know they also have the Ibanez uh, 170, but, I mean, these are cool, you know what, $200 guitars. So, uh, Glary... Obviously, they're starting to get into that market. Um, we've all seen their S-style guitar or their Strat-style guitars. And those things were, you know, $75 or something like that. But now we have a set neck construction on here. Got kind of a little rusty screw right there. Um, since we're right here like this... Let's go ahead and let's look at these electronics. Yeah, this first screw is kind of rusty. The other two look fine though. I like the color of this guitar. Um, there's a little tiny flaw right there in the paint. Oh, there's my front door. But there's a little tiny flaw in the paint that I see right here but overall it, it's pretty nice we get in here and look at these electronics then you can see we've got the small little potentiometers normal three-way switch uh, you got the little green um, for the uh, the capacitor you got the small green capacitor for the tone controls so, you know, it's adequate, right? Maybe not the prettiest thing we've ever seen. Let me grab a third screw so that we don't put that rusty one back in there. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, again, I see a little tiny something right there, but that's, that's not too bad. We're just going to try to really over critique the guitar right now. So again, right in this spot right here, I see a little bit of something. 
then I can also sort of see a couple of stripes right through there where it looks like the pieces of wood were glued together. Um, here's where our neck is glued into place. And, you know, a little bit right there. It looks a little, a little bumpy right there, but not too bad. Back of the neck feels good. I know the old Glary's didn't have a finished neck. And so, yeah, they're, they're up in their game, guys. They're getting better. So it looks like a regular sort of a Gibson-style setup where we have two humbuckers and the ABR-1 bridge with a stop tail piece, three-way switch, volume, volume, tone, and tone. You've got the binding around the neck. Um, the fret ends, it's still got some rough fret ends. The nut, uh, it maybe could be filed down a little bit. But um, it feels right here like, it feels like it sets in there pretty good. It's not leaning over the edge um, on either side too bad. It's got the binding and the dots across the side. Um, some type of a rosewood. I don't have any specks in front of me, but some type of a rosewood. Okay, let's take a look and see what strings they put on this. It looks like a 9. 9242s. Let's pull the strings off. Let's restring it. Let's work these fret ends a little bit. I like the color of it. It's got these block inlays. Go ahead and get these off of here. It got a, it's a little rusty. There's been a lot of rain lately. It's winter time. That could explain some of that. It's winter in China too, right? And they sat in a warehouse somewhere. I, I think a upgrade would be to have a serial number on it somewhere. And to um, have uh, something somewhere that would say made in China. I think would be cool just to you know just to be transparent right okay so I got my little fret file here and we're just gonna go along here and we're gonna hit these frets one swipe so I'm not a hundred percent sure what the price of this guitar is but I think on their site, these this is the one that goes for $179. So there's a little bit of binding on this guitar. And hopefully, what I'm doing right here isn't damaging that binding. But that, those frets are they're a little bit better now. Let's take a good look at that. If I damaged any of that, might not be able to see that very good, but uh, overall, I think, um, I don't know, I've just seen a lot of glaries, and uh, I'm very optimistic that they are, they're getting better. So now I'm just taking a little thousand grit sandpaper. And uh, we're just kind of hitting these and shining these frets up a little bit. So they're definitely not stainless steel frets on this model. But the way that it reminds me of the I Ibanez, uh, you know, what is that model number again? The 170s. But those Ibanez guitars, um, that I showed you earlier in the video. That thing is a bolt-on neck. And this is a set neck. And as a guitar shop owner, for years, if a guitar came in and it was an Epiphone 
or an Ibanez or something, the normal rule of thumb would to be offer somebody 200 bucks for anything that's set neck. If it was like a Epiphone Les Paul or something like that. And, and this is even, you know, five or seven years ago. Anything with a set neck, usually if you're in it around $200, you're, you're doing okay. So there we go. Let's get in here tight now. So just that little bit of extra prep work right there. And you got a pretty nice looking guitar. Okay, you guys know it wouldn't be a real Zim's Guitars video without putting some F1 oil on this fretboard. I'm getting kind of thick with it there. There's no dirt on this fretboard because it is brand new. And I do want to thank the guys at Glary for sending this to me. Most likely this fingerboard um, is what they would call a pal ferro, or it's possibly uh, Indian Laurel uh, Rosewood. But I don't know what it is. I have no spec sheet or anything on this. I'm going off the top of my head here. It's got the plastic uh, covering over these pickups. Let's see if I can pull that off of there. Okay. There we go. All right, let's get a set of strings for this thing. Today's string choice. Okay, I'm gonna put a set of Ernie Ball Primo Slinky on this, 9.5 through 44. So it's a little bit heavier than a set of nines because this is um, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. So this is the Les Paul scale length, the Gibson scale length. And um, I usually put nine gauge strings on everything Fender and uh, 10 gauge strings on everything Les Paul. But I decided to go somewhere in the middle with this one and just a little bit lighter. And so we're going to go with a 44 here. Okay, let me get in here and let's take a look at the truss rod and see if it is functioning. Probably should have done this before I put the strings on it. Move the string out of the way. Okay, there we go. So it has a truss rod and it feels very loose. So I'm going to snug it up a little bit here. There we go. I'm going to give it one more good little turn. Okay. I will take my notch straight edge, lay it on here, and let's take a look. Okay, so I have a little bit of back bow now. 
So that is nice and tight. Loosen it up just a tad. So there we go. Just a little tiny bit of light underneath this. So our truss rod is nice and tight right now. And so we got to just see if this has good playable action. Got to see if this guitar, let's tune it up, see how she plays. Okay, so here's our string height off the nut. So you can see that the nut um, could be filed a little bit lower right there. It's just kind of high. It's actually really high. And another crazy thing that we're going to look at. It's not crazy. But another thing that we're going to look right now is that our tailpiece right here is already down as far as it will go. Alright, so with this down already straight out of the box, this thing is... This thing is decked, so it'll just up to give you a higher string action, but we already have too high of a string action right here. Yeah, so you see we already have too high of a string action. Okay, so, um, ouch. Okay guys, so, the guitar is tuned up. So the neck is straight on it, but the string height is, is still too high. So the nut could be uh, cut a little nicer, and that will help bring the string height down. But the way this is already down as far as it will go, um, th th that's not good. So unfortunately there isn't any way to really get this string action down. Now it's still a playable guitar and for a beginner I mean it's okay it looks cool um, but to really slam the action like I like to play with the action nice and low uh, it's not going to get you there so I think Glary has made um, steps in becoming a better brand and having higher quality instruments because this is the nicest one I've seen out of them but to but because this is um, you know I think maybe the neck was set in there at the wrong angle a little bit so uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking and so you know it's our first attempt but you know you just got this high string height and so uh, there you guys go. It's a glary. It looks cool, but it, it because of this problem right here. I mean, you could you could file the nut and fix that, but I don't think there's anything you can do to bring this bridge down. So I think the the, the guys at Glary and they're probably never going to send me another guitar after this. But I think they need to work on where they have this neck set. It's not set. It's too flat. It needs to come up this way a little bit. So uh, that's where a bolt-on neck, you'd be able to get in there and you'd be able to shim the neck. But on this guitar, that's pretty much it. Uh, you guys want to still hear me play it, uh, I guess I can do that. So if you've watched this far into the video, thank you so much. Let me go up front and sit behind my uh, counter and, and I'll strum this thing a little bit. <laughs>
it's it's a cool guitar, and I think Glary has stepped up their game. But there's still, again, there's a couple of issues. The nut, and I'm nitpicking a, a little bit here, but the nut could have been filed down better. And then the way this bridge is already decked, I mean, Glary sent me this guitar, and they knew I was going to make a YouTube video about it. That's why they sent it to me. And they sent me one where this bridge piece right here was already decked down as far as it will go. So you can't lower the, the string height on this. So uh, anyhow, guys, there you got it. Buyer beware if you get your uh, hands on one of these Glary's. And again, I want to thank Glary for sending this guitar out to me. And uh, hopefully they'll do good with this. And hopefully they'll um, be able to uh, make some adjustments and, and get better at what they do. So thank you guys for watching. Everybody have a great day.